Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out this podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber Car Program. Don't get stuck putting all those miles and depreciation on your personal vehicle. Instead, check out the Fair for Uber Car Program. I used the program for 10 weeks. It was super simple, and Fair even arranged for Uber to pick me up at my home and drive me to my new car, which was a nice Hyundai Elantra for $195 per week plus taxes. That price includes the car, plus your rideshare insurance, and best of all, unlimited miles. Now, when you compare this program to Lyft's program, the cost for the car is less and the bonuses are more. The program is available in California for now, but there are other programs all across the country. So check the FAIR website for prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free. So check it out, download the FAIR app, get a car today. It's a great program. And be sure to use our code, which is RSG100, RSG100, so we get credit for sending you there. All right? All right. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, have I told you about Audible? Sign up today to get a free audiobook from Audible. This week, I'm highly recommending a classic book for entrepreneurs and anyone working on their plan B. The book is The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. I read this book and it was my mind was blown. So you can go to therideshareguy.com forward slash audible for a 30-day free trial and a free audiobook. That's right. You can get this book right now. Audible is great for drivers who want to learn on the road. Go to therideshareguide.com forward slash audible and get the four-hour work week by Tim Ferriss right now. Let's start the show. Hey, everybody. How are you doing out there? Driving in your cars, making money, working with Uber and Lyft. How's your day going? I hope you're having a good day. Thanks for joining me today. It's uh, my my pleasure, my honor to be talking with you out there in your car. I'm recording this on Wednesday, the 30th of October, and uh, we got a day before Halloween. I'm getting better. I was sick. Doesn't that just suck when you get sick? I even got a flu shot. I still got a little bit sick. So I took two days where I didn't do any exercise. I didn't go to the health club, Um, but I'm getting better now. And I started back at the health club on Monday. So I just had my third day today back at the health club. And uh, it's tough. What I do at the health club is I I do some aerobics, you know, that high high interval intensity training. And then, uh, then I do some weights and then I do like 10 minutes of stretching. Then I jump into the sauna and I bring my phone with me and my uh, earbuds, and I do a 20-minute headspace meditation in the sauna. And that's usually my favorite part of the day. I just love, you know, getting into my own little space there and sweating, and it's just healthy and good and develops my sense of presence. And it was tough today. I just couldn't get comfortable. My back was hurting a little bit. People were talking in the sauna. I was easily distracted. Some days are like that, you know? Isn't that the way it is? Some days are diamonds. Some days are rocks. So what are you going to do? Tomorrow will be a better day in the sauna with the Headspace Headspace Meditation app. (laughs) All right. We're going to cover some news stories today. 
get you up to date on what people are talking about. So, first story today, LAX. LAX, people are not happy um, at LAX because, uh, you know, just like what happened at SFO, they've changed the system and people resist the change. Let's get this article from SF Gates, got some uh, great comments. Quote, my Uber driver said it took him two hours, that's all in bold caps, to pick me up. The gridlock is insane. Says he won't be coming to LAX. This will make great skyrocket. Who designed the vehicular flow? Uh, Another person said, that lot is too small for Uber to handle. Congestion, frustration, and grand prize, a whole lot of angry passengers. Another quote, 15 minutes to walk to pick up lot because all the shutters were too full and then 30 minutes of waiting to get through the lift line plus insane traffic for, for my driver to get out of the airport. Last one I'll share with you. Y'all need to form official lines terminal side so people don't cut. Buses are not stopping at consistent spots on the curb and people don't know which line of people to stand behind. Took 20 minutes just to get a bus because buses kept picking up before and after a crosswalk. So we'll keep you posted on this, how it shakes out. It took uh, it took a good several months for uh, San Francisco to get it sorted out, and I still don't like the system, but that's what you got to do. We're drivers. We roll with it. Nearly Next article, nearly two-thirds of Uber customers don't tip their drivers, study says. Yeah, no shit. I could have told you that. Um, <clears throat> so I don't even know why this is such a big s- story. Um, yeah. If you can get 20% of your passengers to give you a tip, that's good. You know, if you can get a third of them, you're you're like a superstar. So yeah, so that's about it. Two thirds of the people, they just assume that Uber and Lyft drivers don't don't need to get tips and they don't tip, you know, they're just cheap. It's a service industry. We're just like waiters, you know, we take care of you. We drive you from point A to point B. You ought to tip us if we do a good job for you. And some passengers do, they're great, you know, The tippers are awesome, and I always tip my driver. So if you're complaining about not getting tips, start tipping. That's usually what what can make a change for you. Next article is uh, from the Washington Post. Who tips best on Uber? Economists analyzed 40 million trips. Here's what they found. Okay. Men tip more often on Uber. Interesting. Uh, let's see what else they say here. Men tip 12% more if their driver is a woman. All right. So that's interesting, right? Not surprising. They want to look good for the, for the, the, the driver, the woman driver. Uh, let's see what else. Drivers from areas with lower incomes or larger Hispanic populations get tipped less. Okay. Well, those areas probably have a little less, uh, spare money, spare change to, uh, to hand out. Riders leave higher tips if their driver is on time, okay? They tip less if a driver accelerates too sharply, brakes suddenly, or speeds during the ride. They also tip slightly less if the driver picks them up in older model car, which the author defines as anyone manufactured before 2019. Well, this is true. I did notice that when I went from my Prius, 2013 Prius, to a 2017 Honda Accord, I did start to get more tips. If you see a driver again, you'll tip 27% more the second time. But that doesn't happen very often. Listen to this one. Riders rated a perfect five-star tip twice as often as those with 4.7 stars. So when they see you're a five-star driver, they're more likely to give you a tip, right? Okay. Tips are highest between three in the morning and five in the morning. So that's because people tend to be a little more inebriated, a little more loosey-goosey, and they're a little more freer with their money. All right, interesting stuff. Next, the New York Times. Your Uber driver is retired. You shouldn't be surprised. All right, so what this article is basically saying is that about 10% 10 of people over the age of 60 are out there doing other kinds of jobs, right? They're not retiring. And... I, I find this totally reasonable and uh, it makes sense because 
People don't like to just retire and do nothing. They want to stay busy. They want to have some kind of purpose. And going out in their car and driving and meeting people, it's very stimulating. And they can make some extra money. They don't have to make a killing. They just uh, want to make a little bit of extra money, helps pay for you know a vacation, uh, things like that. So yeah, it's uh, great, great for people who are in retire the retirement years to uh, to go out and, and make a little bit of extra money and do something that's fun. Okay, Uber, Uber Money. Uber announces deeper push into financial services with Uber Money. So I actually wrote an article about this uh, and I made a video about this for the Rideshare Guy, which by the time this podcast comes out, you'll have already possibly seen that. But it was interesting that... Um, about 40% of all Uber trips globally are paid using paper currency. So that means that, you know, in the United States, everyone pays through the app. So we don't worry about that. But 40% of all Uber trips, they're still paid with um, with paper currency. And Uber Uber Money's part of their mission is to bring that, that amount down and ultimately get it to zero where everybody is paying um, through the app. Also, in many... Uh, parts of the world, the drivers are not able to cash out, you know, instantly like we are. So that's another thing that they're looking to to improve upon. They also made some changes to their credit card, which is a joint product with Barclays. So in the previous uh, version of the credit card, um, you did not get any cash rewards if you took an Uber ride, any of the Uber transportation products. Um, now that they've relaunched it, you can earn 5% rewards when you take an Uber ride, um, when you use one of their scooter services, or even if you use their Uber helicopter. There's a great article in the Washington, uh, in the Wall Street Journal about that. So um, the other part about the Uber credit card now is that instead of getting cash rewards, you're given Uber cash rewards, which means you're given money which you can use towards uh, Uber Eats, you can use towards Uber, Uber, you know, car rides, and you can use towards Uber helicopter rides. So like Apple, they're kind of creating their own ecosystem. And I think it's great. Uh, it's, a, it's another attempt to create something that will help them to become more profitable. And you got to give it to them for at least giving it a try. And uh, I think everything that they're trying to do there is good for drivers and um, good for Uber. So good for Uber for doing that. Now, final topic, Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash have taken the first big step in their $90 million campaign to fight legislation that could make it more difficult for the companies to classify their drivers as contract workers. Okay, this is CNN Business. So, um, our governor in California, Gavin Newsom, signed off on the bill, AB5, which makes it almost impossible for Uber and Lyft to classify us drivers as um, independent contractors. They'd have to classify us as employees. And with that, we would have to get paid more. We would have to have some benefits and some guarantees, uh, some protections. Now, what Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash are doing is they're spending $90 million to try and convince enough Californians that AB5 is not good for drivers. So if you're a driver, you have probably have gotten some notifications from Uber and Lyft where they want you to click to say that you support them in this uh, new new uh, bill, which is called uh, the ballot measure. It's a new ballot measure. It's going to be on the ballot next year called the Protect App-Based Drivers and Services Act. I bet they spent a lot of money and a lot of time figuring out what to call this act so that it sounds like it's the best thing for the drivers. It is not, <laughs> but it's called the Protect App-Based Drivers and Services Act. So they're basically trying to pay pay drivers uh, less than they would have to pay drivers if AB5 passes. So if you're a driver, you should not be supporting this. Um, I am a driver. I'm opposed to it. Um, I want drivers to have as much power as possible, and they do that by... Uh, AB5 being implemented, and um, you know, basically what what my understanding is, if AB5 passes, we'll all be getting approximately 30% more than we're currently getting, 
And with this new act that they're proposing that they're going to, the Californians are going to vote on, they're going to be paying us less than that. So I'm opposed to it, but that's, uh, that's where they're spending $90 million. So you got to ask yourselves, why are they spending $90 million? It's not to help the drivers. It's to help the company. So you got to remember that if Uber's this supportive of it, um, and Lyft and DoorDash, it's because they want to pay us less less money than they have to, right? If you look back at the history of Uber and Lyft, your history with Uber and Lyft, you got to acknowledge that they're paying us less per mile, they're paying us lower bonuses, they're 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 manipulating us with with different schemes, uh, they're gamifying the whole app. All of these things are to control us, control when we drive, where we drive, and how much we're getting paid. So that should tell you that they're not looking out for your best interest as a driver. And if they're supporting something called the Protect App-Based Drivers and Services Act, you should turn, you should vote no and, and uh, not support it and tell everyone you know to vote no on that. All right? I'll get off my soapbox now. All right. So that's it for today. That's the news. Now you're all caught up. You can drive around and you got some topics to talk about with passengers. And uh, hope you have a great day. You know, I love doing this podcast. I love reaching out to, to drivers. I love this whole industry. You know, I love writing the articles and making the videos and, and um, putting out this podcast. It's just a great business and drivers are the best. We're entrepreneurs. We're out there making it happen talking to people, making some money, working on our plan B, creating a better life for ourselves and our families. You guys are all awesome. Men and women, rideshare drivers, you rock. This is Jay Crater saying y'all go out and have a fantastic, fantastic day. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one-minute-per-day podcast called Nomad Daily, in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna, it's going to automatically load up, and you're going to get the next episode, and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half. And boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right. Next episode, more news, interviews, all things Rideshare Dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.